Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're actually visiting Garden of the Gods on another episode that you're going to be able to see. However, I wanted to show you the food that's available here. So we are at a place called Bean Sprouts and I can't wait. The menu looks absolutely delicious. They have breakfast all day and then sandwiches for the afternoons. And so I am super psyched. So you're coming along with me. While we're waiting on our food, I thought what better thing to do than to explore the Garden of the Gods Park just a little bit with you all. Now again, you will be seeing this on another video, but look at this. This is one of the only free parks that you will be able to go to here in the Colorado Springs area that has such an amazing story. This place is awesome. As you can see, there's tons of little points of interest and everything from Balanced Rock, which used to be the earliest tourist attraction to this area, to Cathedral Spires, giant footprints, something called gray rock, and even something called the kissing camels. Now, of course, I'm gonna show you all of that in way more detail on that other video, but let me tell you the story of Garden of the Gods. Garden of the Gods actually was first explored by the Native American people. They came here a really long time ago as they were hunters and gatherers through the area, and they actually found signs that maybe, just maybe, that they used some of the rocks out here as hearths for their fires and things like that, which is so cool. Then after that, the explorers came over and started checking out this area. They instantly realized that Garden of the Gods did not look like the surrounding area. In fact, it rises up with this jutting red rock, which is just so cool. And they thought, hmm, this might be something. It later went on to become a tourist attraction, tons of people coming to the area because they just thought it was so neat. After it became a tourist attraction, later on it went on to go through a series of different hands and it finally landed on one particular man who decided it was gonna be his life legacy to leave this for the enjoyment of everyone for free. So now you can come out here and explore the park and not have to pay any kind of cost of admission. So that's super, super cool. But you're gonna see that again in another video. Right now, it's about the food here at Bean Sprout. So let's get to it. Now the way that it works here at Bean Sprout is you just come through this line right here and you can see the menu is above. Some great options. I actually ended up getting the chicken pesto chango and then also a raspberry lemonade. So super simple. After you complete your checkout right here, then, then you find a place to sit. Pretty simple. They also hand you a little buzzer and whenever your food is ready, the buzzer will go off and you can go to the counter and pick it up. It only took about, I wanna say five minutes tops for me to get my food once I ordered it. And finally, we have it and it is here. So without further ado, let's open it up. Oh my goodness, that looks like a delicious sandwich. Now, I do notice something that I forgot. I typically don't get tomatoes and I definitely forgot to cut them. So we'll be doing a little modification, but this is what it looks like and mm mm mm. Now my sandwich today was $10.75 and then my drink was a couple bucks. So all in all, not too bad, especially considering we're eating at what's considered to be an attraction. This looks big and delicious. So I think what I'm gonna do is make that modification. Wasn't their fault, it was mine. I just don't do tomatoes. And then um, we're gonna dig in. I am so excited. Okay, let's take a little bit of a closer look now that I've made those modifications. It looks like we have a little side salad over here with spinach, carrots, it looks like a little bit of kale, and this dressing, which I'm really excited to try. This is going to be very, very good. And then our sandwich itself has this ciabatta bread with pesto, and then also we have sun-dried tomatoes, chicken, a little bit of cheese, Look at this, this is about to be delightful. Let's try out this dressing first, shall we? Mmm. Mmm, a little tangy. Ooh, that's gonna be very good for this morning. Now, I decided to go ahead and go with a lunch option as opposed to a breakfast option this morning because I wanted to start my day off with something a little bit more hearty, and this definitely seemed like it was gonna be it. This is going to be so, so good, and I cannot wait to dive into the salad. But first, let's get to the big guy right here. Let's get to our actual sandwich. Now, this is a moderately sized sandwich, nothing too big, nothing too small. It has a wonderful smell to it. You can smell the richness of the pesto for sure. Mmm, a little, the little subtleties of the smell of the sun-dried tomato that has a very distinct smell to it. And the chicken looks like it's cubed to perfection. 
So what are we waiting for? Here we go. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Now we took a bite out of this one, but let me just show you the layers of this one really quickly. So while I was taking that bite, I got this really bright, amazing taste from this pesto. It is so delicious. It's very herby. At the same time, it's very creamy. I had a slight bite of one of the sun-dried tomatoes and it was so sweet, almost like a little pop of sweetness. And then the chicken down here, the chicken was cooked so well, it did not dry out in the cooking process and with the little tiny bit of cheese, it absolutely married with all of these other ingredients so well. In other words, it's earthy, it's vibrant, it's bright, and it is so tasty and I am so excited that I ordered this. Now I did make that blunder with the tomatoes and I was afraid that I'd have some little slimies on there but that's not the case and in fact if I were to come back here I can already tell you I would order this again. Definitely. Mm. Most definitely. But before I will fall that down, let's try the salad also. I'm really excited about that dressing so I'm kind of spreading it throughout and um, let's just grab a little bite here oh that's a big bite okay here we go let's try some of this salad I like that they have used the darker leaves of spinach as opposed to the iceberg this is gonna have way more flavor and it's gonna be way better for me mm. oh wow the dressing, very citrusy, very bright, mm, so good. Now I could easily see the insertion of maybe apples into this or even nuts and it making it even next level but by itself super super good. And something I didn't talk about while ago before we dug in was our drink. I wanted to test it out. This is raspberry lemonade. So, so tart and so good. There's a little bit of sweetness to it that makes it just that perfect, like, summery filling drink. So definitely really worth getting. I uh, wish I could get a bigger thing of this to take with me. In fact, this would be great for travel. But I don't think that they sell it like that. So, um... Well, it is what it is. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break from me by showing you a few things from Garden of the Gods while I eat this food. Oh my goodness. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, Avengers, I joined the Clean Plate Club today. That was delicious. Gonna clean up my mess a little bit because I was a messy eater today. Okay, adventurers, we enjoyed very much so the food inside of the visitor center here at Garden of the Gods. I would definitely suggest if you're coming out for the day, making this your stop for either a snack or breakfast, either one. Absolutely delicious food. And you know, it was $10 for a sandwich, but it came with a wonderful, amazing salad to go along with it. And I am so full now. So I would definitely say for the value of money at an attraction, very good. Until next time, guys, bye.